Number 36, letter A. Calculate the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the sun. All right, so I have the sun over here on the left. It has a radius right, of almost 700,000 kilometers and this particular mass. So uh, what we have to do is we have to find the acceleration due to gravity uh, on the surface of the sun. So let's choose this particular point, all right? So when we're thinking about acceleration due to gravity or we're talking about, you know, I mean, by talking about accelerations, right, we're also talking about forces. So uh, we're also talking about the force due to gravity at this particular, uh, particular location. And therefore, that causes me to kind of consider this formula over here on the right-hand side, the force due to gravity formula, right? Where it says the force due to gravity is equal to the gravitational constant multiplied by mass, excuse me, mass 1 times mass 2 all over r squared. Now, the question is, well, what are the two masses in the problem? Well, there's two objects here. There's the sun, and there is this object over here on the surface. So let's call this ma, all right? So instead of writing a 1 here, uh, let me put in an a, okay? So ma times then the mass of 2, but what's the other mass in the problem? It's the mass of the sun, right? So we'll just put a little s there. So now, this sounds great. I can calculate then the, uh, you know, force due to gravity, all right, on the object, um, but I might need to know this mass, right, in order to calculate, you know, the force here, right? If I don't know this, how the heck can I calculate this? Well, remember one thing. The force due to gravity, right, always points towards the center. Okay, so if the force points towards the center of a circular object, what's that called? It's called the centripetal force, all right? And if there's an acceleration that's associated with that centripetal force, which there should be, um, then that's called the centripetal acceleration. So basically, the acceleration due to gravity is the centripetal acceleration. So what that tells me now is that I can actually use this formula over here, and I can substitute this into F, because this F is really the force due to gravity, which is the centripetal force. All right, And the centripetal force here would be then equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. So now here's the question. Okay, So let's plug that in. MAC is equal to GMAMS all over R squared. What mass is this? Is it MA or is it the mass of the sun? Well, what are we trying to find? We're trying to find the acceleration due to gravity on the surface. So what object is on the surface? It is the this mass, right? MA, whatever we want to call it. Okay. So if I'm trying to find the acceleration due to gravity at this point, then I must know the force, right? And I must also take this mass into account, not this mass, okay? I mean, this mass will help me find the acceleration, but when I'm plugging it into my formula here, I'm thinking, uh, you know, in terms of this formula over here on the right-hand side, I'm thinking the centripetal force experienced by an object on the surface of the sun is equal to the mass of that object on the surface of the sun multiplied by the centri centripetal acceleration uh, on that object on the surface of the sun. All right, you, do you hear the consistency in, in everything that I'm saying there? So again, it should be an MA. Now that is what causes or allows us to cancel those masses. So we don't need to know that. So the formula here always will break down. I've been doing this for the past, I don't know, several problems, four problems or whatnot. So we can almost just you know, instead of deriving this all the time, you can just use this formula, you know, as a, um, I don't know, as a given, right? You, unless you got to derive it every time, I don't know, but you can save yourself a lot of time. Whatever, you know, whatever you're trying to find the acceleration due to gravity of, you know, that's the object that goes here. So if you're tr trying to find the acceleration due to gravity of the sun, the earth, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Andromeda, whatever, you, I think you get the point. So um, all I need to do now is plug in the values. All right, so I have this centripetal acceleration will be equal to the gravitational constant, which is 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11. That will be then multiplied. Let me fix that. That will then be multiplied by the mass of the sun. So here's the mass. Okay, that's in kilograms. Great, we need it in kilograms. So that's 1.99 times 10 to the 30. Okay, all divided by now. The distance between the two objects, now the center of mass of the sun is located here, and here's that other mass, so the distance between them is simply the radius. Remember, it has to be in meters. So simply add, you know, three, multiply it by 1,000, or simply just add three zeros 
to the end of the number. So this would now become 696,340,000. All right, zero, zero, zero. And please do not forget to square the, that result, okay? So we have the centripetal acceleration now being equal to, all you gotta do is plug it in, 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11. Oops, 6.673 times 10 to the minus 11 times 1.99 times 10 to the 30th. Divide that by now. Uh, no parentheses are necessary. 696,340,000 and square. So here we get 200, 270, I'll round to 74. Okay, meters per second squared. It's a pretty large acceleration. All right, that would be the acceleration due to gravity of the sun on the surface of the sun. Let's take a look at now at letter B. So hold on. This was all letter A. Let's look at letter B. By what factor would your weight increase if you could stand on the sun? And don't worry if you cannot. Let's figure it out anyway. So here is, uh, I'll do letter B right here. All right, so we're basically trying to find, you know, a, a ratio between the two weights. So it wants to know how much it would increase by. So what that means is I want to place, I mean, look at the acceleration, right? It's going to be a lot, we're going to be a lot heavier uh, on the, I mean, our masses are the same, but the, our weights will change. We'll feel a lot heavier on the uh, sun than on the earth. So therefore, I'm going to do something like this. The weight, uh, our weight on the sun divided by our weight on the earth. Okay, that's really the ratio we're looking for. Now, when I do that, remember, weight is equal to mg. So this would mean that it's equal to the mass our mass divided by the gravi the um, acceleration due to gravity on the sun, and we just found that. Divided by our mass multiplied by the uh, acceleration due to gravity on Earth. So look what happens. Mass is cancel. So it's just simply gravitational acceleration on the sun divided by gravitational acceleration on the Earth. So this just works out to be 274 over 9.80, and then just plug it on in. So 274 over 9.8. And we get about 30, right? I'm just going to round. We get about 30. So it's 30 times larger, okay? Uh, we would feel 30 times not larger. We'd feel 30 times heavier, okay? And that would definitely be not so much fun. So, um, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Really do appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.